Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. I don't really have anything too paranormal, but here's one that stayed with me. And when I say stayed, I mean it's burned in my memory. It's an encounter I had with an Ojibwe woman named Sarah. Let me give a little context first. 1989, Congress passes a law. The Smithsonian must return many of the items that it has on exhibit. Human remains and funerary objects. Anything considered sacred by a native tribe must be returned to that tribe. This starts a chain of repatriation of sacred objects. Fast forward. 2017. I'm working as an intermediary between American museums and Native Americans. The typical meeting goes like this. A tribal representative shows up at a museum. I provide them with a list of items on display and in storage. The representative makes a claim on an item or two. I determine whether that claim is legitimate. Did the item serve a religious function at any point in time? If the claim is legit, I will inform the museum. Then we send the items back with the tribal reps. Nothing too complicated, but it can get messy. Many natives insist that certain items are sacred even when they have no religious purpose this muddies the legal waters. Case in point. Sarah, Ojibwe. I'm expecting her for a meeting one morning. I've been told that she's been traveling state to state, museum to museum, searching for a very specific object. Before she arrives, I leaf through my inventory sheets. I see that the museum does have a number of sacred Ojibwe items. This includes a ceremonial pipe and stem currently on display, a big no-no nowadays. Sarah shows up. Her request surprises me. She's looking for a cradle. I gently inform her that we don't repatriate utilitarian items. No moccasins, no baskets, no cradles. We can only return sacred items. Sarah tells me the cradle is sacred. It was carved by an elder for a spiritual purpose. Okay, but even if that's true, the museum is going to fight to keep the cradle. And they'll win too. Cradles aren't used in religious ceremonies. Besides, there's not even a cradle listed in the inventory. But Sarah asks if she can look around anyway. I oblige. I lead her through the museum. We pass by the ceremonial pipe and stem on display. Pick related to give you an idea of what it looked like. Sarah stops. She looks at it, then at me. Her face is filled with sadness. This is an Ojibwe pipe. It's considered sacred and should not be on display. I tell her I'm aware of that. I've already filed the appropriate paperwork. She can leave with it today if she wishes. Sarah thanks me. I led her towards the storage room. On the way, she tells me about the cradle. How an Ojibwe elder carved it over half a century ago. How he made it out of a sacred tree. When he found the tree, the elder thanked the spirits. After chopping it down, he left an offering. When he returned to his tribe, he fashioned a cradle out of the wood. Then he presented it to Sarah's grandparents. It was a gift for Sarah's mother, only a newborn at the time. I had a dream about the child. The elder tells them. In the dream, the spirit spoke to the elder. They told him to make Sarah's mother a cradle out of the sacred tree. They told him to bless it with a powerful prayer. Then they told him to deliver a message to the family. Your child will be a drumkeeper, and her child will be a spiritual leader. Drum keepers are people who look after ceremonial drums. And her child will be a powerful medicine man. And even after I am gone, I will be with them. Then the elder prays. He prays over Sarah's grandparents, over Sarah's infant mother, and over the cradle. This is why it's considered sacred. It belongs with my tribe. It belongs to my child. She places her hand on her stomach. I didn't even notice a baby bump. She must be only a few weeks pregnant. I'm not sure how to respond. 
Decide to just keep silent. We arrived at the storage room. I open the door and Sarah steps inside. Then she gasps. It's here. I try to remind her that there's no cradle listed on the inventory sheet. But she's already hurrying through the aisles of boxes and shelves. She stops at a large box labeled, junk. She opens it. Inside, there's a beautiful, solid wood cradle. Sarah instantly falls to her knees. After a long silence, she begins to quietly sob. I feel incredibly awkward. I was never good around people who cry. I tell Sarah I'll give her some time to look through everything. Then I head back into the museum. This is where things get a little strange for me. I'm making my way back towards the front desk. I pass the ceremonial pipe and stem display. The entire thing is encased in plexiglass, I believe. There's no way anybody can touch it. But the thing is taken apart. I don't mean knocked over. I mean actually taken apart. Pick related will give you an idea of how it was set up. The stem is still held in place by the stand. But the pipe is removed. It's sitting in front of the stand. The only way to do this is by hand. The stand is a very snug fit. I talk to the guy at the front desk. To his knowledge neither the curator nor the museum director haven't stopped by at all. There's nobody who could have altered the display. I actually went back and looked at the pipe display for a while. Trying to figure out what exactly happened. Then Sarah approaches. She's no longer crying. She looks excited. She tells me that she'll be back in one week to pick up the cradle. I remind her again that the cradle is not technically considered sacred. She says she knows. But she was told to be back in one week. Told? By whom? I ask. But she just tells me she'll be taking the pipe today. Long story short, she leaves with the pipe and stem. Over the next week, I review the museum footage. I'm interested in whether the pipe and stem display simply fell apart, even though it's unlikely. Due to the angle and lighting, I couldn't see much on the security footage. Just the glare of the plexiglass. I did determine though, that nobody ever approached the display during the time that Sarah and I looked at it, and when I returned to find the pipe disassembled. Needless to say, I'm scratching my head. One week later, Sarah shows up again. By now things have changed. The museum director is being forced to give up the cradle. The inventory mix-up kind of put him in hot water. There's a potential for a hefty fine. Possible legal repercussions too. It's just a cradle. Nothing worth seeing. Give it to her. Let's get rid of it. He literally decides this an hour before Sarah shows up. This is highly unusual, even unethical by most standards but inwardly I'm kind of laughing to myself. Part of my job requires being sensitive to native customs and values. I'm thinking, this little lady actually got her cradle back. So when she arrives, I hand the cradle over to her. It's hard to impress upon people how unusual this is when I tell them about it. An Ojibwe woman with no education, and without putting up a fight, is managing to leave the museum with a non-sacred item. This literally never happens. Is it just luck? I can't help but ask her. You seemed so sure that you'd be leaving with this item today. Why? This woman is soft-spoken and unassuming. Her response surprises me. You call these things items. You put them in glass cages. She shakes her head like she's enraged. But they suffer like we do. They have spirits just like the living. I'm too embarrassed to speak. Feels like when my mom used to lecture me as a kid. But then she touches her belly. Her next words are clear as day in my mind to this day. New life comes into the world, and elders die. But the spirits stay with us. If you listen, you can hear them too. Then she walks out the door. I never saw her again. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time.